There's so many definitions of gentrification. The one for me that uh, I think is the most comprehensive, it's also uh, concise, is the production of space for progressively more affluent users. This definition speaks to the transformation of space, residential space, commercial space, and also the social recomposition of neighborhoods that occurs as they gentrify. So those spaces are being remade for more affluent. So rents go up, taxes go up, and eventually that neighborhood becomes increasingly unaffordable for those working class families that have lived there for generations that have built that community. My name is Donnie Vett Mossman, and I've lived in Crown Heights for 38 years. We lived in a rent control apartment in the 70s, and the same thing happened. The landlord refused to do repairs. And I remember the day there was water coming out of the living room wall. And my mother looked at me and said, baby, it's time to go. And they redid that building, and we were not allowed to move back in. And I vowed that day that that would never happen to us again. Here's the problem with gentrification. You come into a neighborhood, and you're building up that neighborhood, which is fine. But why do you have to displace the people who already live there? So now you're coming in the select bus service. You didn't do that for me. You remodeled Franklin Avenue train station. In 38 years I've lived here, you didn't do that for me. You're building new housing. Fine, that's where the new tenants will live. But why do you have to displace us? You shouldn't have to. When a neighborhood begins to gentrify, the question I always ask is who benefits? Schools get better, there's more investment in better policing, an area may be cleaned up. It tends to be newcomers who benefit as the long-term people who dealt with the problems in those communities during the hard times end up getting pushed aside. They do the construction in those new apartments. They charge, when they finish, they charge them $2,500 a month rent. They were supposed to come in and fix the violations first and they left the long-standing tenants for last. Our ceilings have caved in, our walls have cracked in, right. our ceilings... Starting in the 90s in particular, this was a process that was increasingly initiated by corporate developers rather than that small-scale home buyer. In more recent years, we see that a lot of financial players are involved in investing in real estate and investing in housing and gentrifying neighborhoods. You can buy and sell. You have that right in this country. You can. But what happens to the tenants? This guy goes to a bank to get a loan and says, listen, I have these two buildings. And what he's doing is he's telling the banker, I can charge anywhere from $3,500 to $4,000 a month rent. You'll have your money back. He's not telling that banker, I have to displace those people who are paying $1,000 a month rent or $700 a month rent. He's not telling them that. He comes in, he purchased these buildings. The only way he can pay back that loan is to get us out. That's got to change. It is usually about raising rents. Tenants who've been in the building for a long time and have low rents, sometimes they try and push those people out because upon vacancy, they're allowed to increase the rent. They come at night, in the morning, they meet you outside, take this money, take this money, and some people give in. They harass you, and they do it time and time and time again. We live through hell here. They took all of the beams out of the apartments and put them in the hallway, and we had to walk around them. They didn't even alert us that they were actually doing construction. You have to fight. You don't have a choice. People have given up and moved out, and we've stopped that. You do not have to leave. We research who their landlord is. And then we connect them with other tenants in the other buildings that he owns, and they realize, oh my god, we have the same issues. And so that's how we make that connection for them, that you're not in this alone. And, and it helps because they have support. So yes, we appreciate the gentrification. I say about time. But why do I have to leave? Why, why can I not stay where I've lived all my life? We demand an end to the harassment that we have experienced. We demand the following be enshrined in a legally binding collective bargaining agreement between the Crown Heights Tenant Union and our landlords. Get involved politically, because when these politicians know you're going to vote for them, believe me, they're going to have your back. Yeah. So that's very important. Get involved, all right? Don't sit on your ass and pray and don't do nothing about it. Let's get ready to... No, let's... We've been ready, okay? <laughs> 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 <laughs>